Assalamualaikum Assalamualaikum dear students welcome to the online lecture on nonlinear control today we are going to uh, discuss this uh, research paper formulas for data driven control stabilization optimality and robustness basically uh, it will require more than one video to fully discuss this paper so this uh, video is just the first part of uh, the discussion of this paper so we are only going to discuss this paper uh, with respect to the matlab simulations and numerical uh, results uh, we are not going to cover the whole paper in detail uh, you know each and every line of the paper uh, this is an uh, this is a paper published in IEEE transactions on automatic control uh, published in March uh, 2020 so it's a fairly recent uh, paper on data driven control and it's a really good paper as well uh, we are going to uh, discuss two parts uh, in this paper in in this video uh, which is like uh, feedback stabilization using data driven control and qu linear quadratic optimal regulation using data driven control so this paper uh, nicely introduces uh, what data driven control is and how it relates to system identification and what kind of methods are already available uh, you know in the literature regarding uh, you know model free control or data driven control uh, then this uh, paper also describes you know its own contributions uh, like uh, what uh, have been done in this paper and uh, basically they have worked on uh, linear matrix inequalities and uh, you, they have solved uh, the feedback control problem linear quadratic regulation problem through convex optimization and uh, then they have uh, uh, extended their work to like nonlinear systems and uh, robustness as well uh, so there are some notations in the paper so for example this uh, this is how they represent a vector so z sub k comma k plus capital t that is uh, the vector of z of k so z of k is the value of z at uh, k so you can see that z is a function from this space to this space so um, k is an element of uh, element of the domain space and uh, if you for for a value for a particular value of k the value of z is z of k okay then uh, this is the representation of a matrix so for a matrix with uh, t rows and n columns z sub i comma t comma n so that is so i would be the starting point so z of i z of i plus one up to so on z of i plus n minus one and similarly row wise z of i z of i plus one and up to so on z of i plus t minus one so t is the number of rows and n is the number of columns and uh, if if there is like only single row then you just uh, can write z of sub i comma n uh, to represent a single row vector uh, so you notice that this this k here or this i here represent the starting point of you know the the domain uh, variable okay so next they uh, write down the linear system a discrete time linear system x of k plus 1 equal a x k plus b u k uh, and y of k is equal to cx k plus d u k so this is a very standard uh, representation of uh, a linear system discrete time linear system and it can also, also be represented in the input output uh, response form but uh, we are not interested in this form we are mostly interested in in this form in this paper so there are some uh, mathematics and the representation of uh, you know different vectors matrices you can download this paper and, and study this this is quite interesting uh, you know layout and sketch of the whole mathematical foundation uh, but since we have uh, only uh, you know i don't want this video to be like three or four hours long so i'll just uh, come straight straight to the point uh, data driven open loop uh, representation so this this is an important quantity like uh, x1 uh, comma t so this equation is important that x1 comma t is equal to uh, 
b a multiply by u sub 0 1 t uh, x 0 t where x 0 t is sort of uh, it's represented here x 0 t uh, so if we take uh, this uh, little t to be you know equal to 1 then this becomes x0 comma t which would be like x0 x1 x2 up to so on x of capital T minus 1 so these are just uh, the values of the discrete time so this uh, subscript d just is just to emphasize that this is a discrete time state space so uh, in discrete time state space the the values of first t uh, the first t values of the state variable are represented by capital x or sub zero comma capital t so this uh, if we come back to here here this is x zero t is uh, just the first uh, first t uh, values of the state uh, vector and similarly these are the first t values of the input vector u uh, u is same as like uh, this uh, this u here this u is the the input so just remember this system because we are interested in in this system uh, especially the the first part of the system x k plus one is equal to a x k plus b u k. Mm, so in this case, so this uh, x one t is going to be important, uh, and x one t is oops x one t is equal to b a. So b and a are those matrices in the system representation, and this uh, times u is the first t values of the input and this is the first t values of the state and this vertical this uh, this horizontal line which is uh, separating the u and x this basically means that these two are uh, arranged one like these are some rows of the matrix and these rows are are below these above rows so this this is just the matrix arrangement uh, shown by this uh, method of horizontal line okay um, then we have uh, some more mathematics and database closed loop representation x k plus 1 is equal to x 1 t g k and there are some like intermediate matrices and stuff like that but but we are uh, we, we will stick to the representation of you know x k plus 1 equal a x k plus b u k um, so from indirect to direct data driven control uh, this this is now we are entering into data driven control design part this is the part actually with, in which we are interested so we want to learn data driven control design stabilization and optimal control so this is the main section that will be covered in today's lecture data driven control design stabilization and optimal control so remember this so let's go uh, let's get started so uh, u will be equal to kx so it's a linear control for linear discrete time systems and this is the first main theorem that we are going to implement using matlab today in this lecture so what does this theorem say uh, this theorem says that let condition 6 hold then any matrix q satisfying this matrix inequality is such that k is equal to this whole equation stabilizes the system 1a now remember uh, system 1a is basically the system that i already told you that this is going to be the most important this is system 1a ax uh, xk plus 1 uh, equals uh, a, a, axk plus buk now what is equation 6 equation 6 is um let's go down a little bit where it um, this is equation 6 so equation 6 is that the rank of a matrix which is formed by arranging u the inputs from 0 to t and the state values from 0 to t is equal to n plus m 
n is the number of state variables and m is the number of control inputs okay just remember this m is the number of columns in the b matrix and n is the size of a matrix so if the rank of this matrix uh, this is the matrix uh, formed by data so values of the input arranged in a row and values of the state arranged in a row uh, these these are like data and uh, what 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 would be the uh, dimension of this matrix so the dimension of uh, the number of columns in this matrix will be equal to capital T so obviously capital T will be larger than n plus m and uh, the number of rows in this matrix would be n plus m so this uh, this uh, values of state variables this will have like n rows and t columns and this u will have uh, m rows and t columns so that means the number of rows in this matrix for which we want the rank to be n plus m the rows will be n plus m and the columns will be obviously greater than or equal to n plus m for this matrix to have a chance of uh, having a rank n plus m because uh, the maximum possible rank of a matrix is uh, minimum of the number of rows and the number of columns so that's why number of uh, columns cannot be less than n plus m otherwise this matrix can never have rank uh, n plus m okay so coming back to theorem 3 so let condition 6 hold that means that the rank of the matrix of input values and the state values let it be n plus m then any matrix q satisfying this matrix inequality is such that this control input will stabilize the system 1a so this is our first control that we are going to implement in in matlab um, and we shall see that uh, you know how this stabilizes so let me remind you that uh, the condition for stability in discrete time systems is that all the eigenvalues must lie within the unit circle so magnitude of all the eigenvalues should be less than strictly less than one for asymptotic stability of discrete time linear systems i hope at this level you know this uh, condition at least so uh, what uh, how do we like uh, let's try to understand in detail so what is this what is this linear matrix inequality so in this matrix we have x sub 0 comma t x sub 0 comma t is you know sort of like a like a matrix which uh, has number of rows is equal to number of state variables and number of columns is equal to number of data points of the state variables q is the matrix the unknown that we have to find x1t we have already looked at x1t uh, above here that x1t is is equal to b a multiply by this matrix u and u 0 1 t and x 0 t so this is the x1 t and then uh, this is the transpose of q matrix which again is unknown and this is the transpose of x1 t which i have already shown you what it is and this is x0 t times q so if you know this is uh, not something you know we cannot figure out this is some something explained very well in the paper so we solve this linear matrix inequality to get q and once we have q then we use the q in this equation u01 t again this is the data input of control and this is times q times inverse of x0 t multiplied by q so this is in this way we calculate the gain k and this gain k is guaranteed to be stabilizing gain for the uh, system xk plus 1 equal axk plus buk okay so uh, the paper further discusses the proof of this theorem that we are not going to discuss here uh, this is the example that we are going to implement in MATLAB so this is a batch reactor uh, system example for which the details are given in in the reference 34 and the sample time they have used is 0 0.1 second 
so these are the a and b matrices so let me just uh, uh, it's about time that we open the matlab uh, i have already opened the matlab to to save time and i have already written the code as well uh, you know to make the video as brief as possible so this is the this is the a matrix and after this vertical line is the b matrix for the c so see that a vertical line b is equal to this matrix vertical line this matrix so that means that this uh, this matrix before the vertical line this is a and this is b so in the matlab code we write down the values of a in the same way that are written here so 1.178 so you see that 1.178 and so on so this this is the a matrix written here in matlab so full a matrix written up to like uh, this uh, this point so you see that final last value 0 0.849 this is this one 0 0.849 and then uh, there is uh, b matrix so b matrix starts with 0 0.004 this this is it and then it goes up to minus 0 0.016 which is like this value then they have uh, uh, you know they have solved this system for using theorem 3 so using uh, this uh, theorem 3 let me show you this this theorem so this using this theorem 3 use solving this matrix linear inequality they have calculated the matrix k and their matrix k is given like uh, this so they have given us the matrix k what we can do here is that we can copy this k in the matlab code and in order to check whether this k is actually stabilizing for this system or not uh, what we do is we calculate the absolute of the eigenvalues of a plus b k let me copy this code like uh, this these uh, four lines control c and let me paste that in uh, you know matlab let me just uh, see lc clear all and control v i have paste press enter and you can see that there are four eigenvalues because this is a four by four system so four eigenvalues all of the the absolute values of the eigenvalues of a plus b k is all the absolute values are less than one so that means that this is closed loop system is asymptotically stable because for discrete systems the closed loop system has to be asymptotically uh, is asymptotically stable when the all the eigenvalues are within the unit circle all right going back to the uh, to our code so this is our code so what they have done here is that they say that uh, you know the uh, design procedure is implemented in matlab we generate data with random initial condition and by applying to each input channel a random input sequence of length 15 so u will be something random so you can generate u using the command rand so here you can see that b has the matrix b has two columns so there will be two inputs so number of columns in the matrix b is is uh, equal to number of inputs so rand 2 comma 14 is that like for two different inputs number of rows is equal to 2 i generate 14 values uh, the 15th value is is generated separately it did not have to be generated separately uh, but i was just doing it for my own understanding so you can write u is equal to rand 1 comma 15 if you want so there is no issue then there is uh, the state values so initial condition i have not taken the initial condition as a random although i can use i can take you know here x not equal to uh rand uh let's say uh it's a it's a four rows and a single column so i can use this or i can use like uh, any give any possible values for the for the uh, initial initial state okay so initial state can be random I, initial state is random I, control input is random so we are generating data we are generating random data for a given system uh, 
and once we have this data what we do is uh, given this random initial condition and random sequence of inputs so we run the for loop uh, so first of all using the initial condition we calculate uh, the state at so x 1 through 4 all four rows of uh, the state and time instant 1 so this is the time instant uh, uh, so k so this is x of 1 x of 1 is equal to a times x of 0 plus b times u of 0 so that is why i have like defined it separately but you could you could have like uh, the first uh, column of u in here instead of u0 but and you can also copy this code if you are like really new to the data driven control or really new to MATLAB programming you, you can just copy paste what I have uh, the code that I have written here and run it and try to understand it okay uh, for so this is the for loop of x of k plus 1 equal a x k plus b u k so uh, I, I can use the variable k here I mean the, the name of the uh, variable does not matter I can just uh, use any name but you know for education purposes it is uh, better to use the name uh, which are you know easily underst underst understandable so x0 x0 this x0 is basically the uh, all the data that has been generated using this random input so these is the these are the this for loop generates 14 state values uh, after this uh, state so we have x0 x1 and uh, this for loop generates x2 uh, up until x of 15 so what is 15 15 is the sequence uh, length of the sequence so capital T is 15 so we are generating 15 data points so we are running uh, so let me clear your concept we have a system xk plus 1 equal axk plus buk and we are running that system for 15 time steps using random input okay so this generates 15 values of the state variables okay there are four state variables each of the four state var variable will have 15 values so this matrix is four rows and 15 columns so this is four cross 15 matrix x0 x0 if you look into the uh, this paper this is uh, this is x0 x sub 0 comma t this is basically this this matrix and then this is u u is like uh, the initial u and all other uh, u values like all total 15 u values then we have x1 x1 is like b a multiplied by u and semicolon means that you know this x0 is underneath the matrix u so we have arranged u and x0 in the same way that is done in the paper like you see this this is vertically uh, sorry this one equation 8 vertically so the equation 8 this equation is this line number 15 of my code so x1 is equal to b a multiply by u uh, divide uh, and u and uh, arranged underneath is x x0 next is something uh, something a little bit uh, different so we have to solve this uh, linear matrix inequality so we have to find q that solves this linear matrix inequality and linear matrix inequality as you know told in the paper uh, here this in a numerical example so they say that uh, for capital T equal to 15 by using the MATLAB command trend to solve 15 we used cvx what is cvx so cvx is basically the convex optimization toolbox um, so this is 15 this is 15 in order to solve the 15 they have used cvx so if you uh, like look at cvx let's go to the website browser uh, 
let's say we type CVX uh, MATLAB so the, the first link you know cvxr.com you can uh, go to this website and basically uh, this is uh, this is uh, I, I think this this is I mean a great project by a professor from Stanford University I think it's a professor Boyd um, hats off to professor Boyd and his team they have created a, a, a very very useful tool for solving con convex optimization problems uh, and it is free to use you can download it uh, so I think you can um, you can download by clicking here and if you like for example open this in new tab then they will uh, take you to you know some uh, libraries but you can like click here download and there is like you know if you're using linux mac windows you can download anything you know related that concerns you and the download instructions are are very easy so license is available once you download run the setup on matlab once you have cvx on your matlab only then you can use uh, this this command that i have used here so we are back so we we have studied the code up to this point and this is where the cvx begins so cvx begin sdp uh, sdp is basically uh, this is the pdf file from the stanford university stanford.edu slash class slash ee slash ee 363 slash notes slash lmi uh, hyphen cvx dot pdf solving semi-definite programs uh, using uh, cvx so we are trying to solve a semi-definite program so this is professor boyd's notes uh, once again I, I highly appreciate the efforts of professor boyd and and, and his team and uh, they show you how to use it you see here uh, cvx begin sdp variable you define the variable you define the objective function and so on and if you don't have an objective function you can just define the variable and you can just define the equation that you're trying to solve and you get uh, uh, the solution so um, what we do here is that you know uh, apply uh, you know the cvx uh, in our code cvx begin sdp our variable is the q matrix the size of the q matrix is 15 comma 4 how do i know the size of the q matrix because if i look at the matrix that i am trying to solve so size of this x0t is 4 rows and 15 columns so this is 4 cross 15 so q has to be 15 cross something but this tells me that this is 15 cross something and this is uh, fif uh, 15 cross uh, sorry uh, this is uh, yeah this is 15 cross 4 so uh, if you look into this uh, like um, you know in a little bit of uh, with with some thinking you can figure out the size of the queue from this matrix so i i did that and and the size of the queue is 15 comma 4 uh, queue must have like 15 rows and four um, columns and uh, so this is the variable in our cvx problem and what we are doing to do going to do is this is the matrix this is the same matrix that is written here uh, x0 uh, t times q and x1 times uh, q and in the underneath that is q transpose x1 transpose and x0 q greater than equal to uh, the identity mat so this is one way of representing you know if you want to uh, make your matrix positive definite uh, this is one way of, of doing this I just want to I just want this Q to be some matrix uh, which results in this being greater than uh, uh, this being positive definite and uh, I picked up uh, this from the 
from here so here in this uh, this is the cvx program that solves the lyapunov equation this is the lyapunov equation where p has to be positive definite or or greater than equal to the identity matrix so, so it, this is one way of ensuring that a matrix is positive definite so cvx end so you can see that this is just a just a uh, four line cvx program and after that program whatever q we we have we calculate the k matrix using this this equation u0 times q times x0 times q inverse so this is the inverse of x0 times q and this is u times q so so this is how we calculate the control gain and this is how we check whether the control gain results in the uh, asymptotically stable closed loop system let's run this program so let me have uh, matlab on on the other side now so this is the uh, so when i when i run this program first of all so this is the cvx running and after the running of cvx these are the control gains and you can see that these are the resulting closed loop eigen values uh, these closed loop eigen values are all within the unit circle so this is how we design closed loop stabilizing controller based on data we generate random data this is incredible this is like uh, i mean it's it's truly outstanding that you have like uh, a and b matrices and uh, you generate some data using random input and based on that data uh, you uh, calculate uh, this uh, using cvx program you calculate the q matrix and based on the q matrix you calculate the feedback gain and based on that feedback gain you can see that the closed loop system is asymptotically stable so now we go back to the, this this paper so far we have uh, implemented the feedback stabilizing control for batch reactor system so this example we have done in matlab using this cvx so i recommend that you know there are there are um, many resources of cvx available online for example if we go here this is the cvx main page so they have like uh, uh, these resources here and uh, there's also uh, the more information so there is a, a pdf for uh, i think users guide cvx users guide so this is the pdf link for that i highly recommend you download the cvx user guide maybe you already know cvx then that's uh, ac excellent okay then uh, this is uh, how we design the uh, next is the linear quadratic regulation this is the final part of this video uh, so for linear quadratic regulation we have xk plus 1 is equal to exk plus buk and plus some maybe disturbance or uh, external input to the system zeta uh, then there is uh, qx and r q and r are weighting matrices so they are selected in such a way that qx comma a is observable and uh, then you know usually the solution of the problem is you know k is equal to minus r plus b transpose x times b whole inverse b transpose x a so this is like uh, you know the normal way of uh, solving uh, the re quadratic regulation problem which is based on the solution of the riccati equation but now we are going to uh, solve this uh, linear quadratic regulation problem using data driven control so in data driven control the main uh, result is theorem 4 so theorem 4 says that let condition 6 hold so condition 6 is the same rank condition that is uh, assumed to be holding in um, theorem 3 i will show you at the end of the video uh, how can we make sure that the condition 6 holds it's very easy then the optimal h2 feedback controller for the system 21 so 21 is is this system so this is this is system 21 um 
for the system 21 can be computed as k is equal to uh, this is the same equation u times q times x0 q whole inverse uh, but the 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 way the method of finding q is now different from from theorem 3 so now we uh, find q by optimizing this uh, by solving this optimization problem minimum over q comma x the trace of this uh, qx times x0 t times q so this qx is the weighting matrix and this q is the unknown variable matrix this is uh, this is also unknown uh, sort of uh, similar to the uh, solution of the riccati equation subject to this this whole matrix being greater than or equal to zero and this another whole matrix being greater than or equal to zero so we have to minimize this subject to this so how we do that we do that by using cvx here is uh, an example the same example the batch reactor example uh, the sequence t is also the same 15 and qx is equal to identity of size n cross n which is 4 cross 4 and r is the identity matrix of size uh, m cross m which is 2 cross 2 so this is easy choice of the way and then they found this control uh, matrix which was uh, found using by solving this uh, optimization problem with cvx so let me show you how it is done using matlab so going back uh, let me just make it smaller so going this is this is the file so you can see that this is the file for feedback uh, control and this is the file for optimal control these two files are almost uh, a lot of the code is same so for example this a matrix is same as the previous one this b matrix is same as the previous one this k is now different this this k is 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 this one is is this one so this is the k 0.0639 so up until minus 0.98 so we just copy uh, this much of the code and control c and paste it in in matlab here clc control v and we check we see this uh, the all the absolute values of all the eigen absolute values of all the eigen values are less than one so this indeed is a uh, asymptotically stabilizing feedback control law this k is is uh, it works we have verified and now we uh, so this this is straight from the paper uh, again this is our way of checking whether the feedback is stabilizing or not so same as before u is generated randomly x is initialized to zeros and then it is uh, you know calculated using the random input u x naught is we can use this value of x naught or any you know random value of x naught as well as we have used here uh, you can i can just copy rand 4 comma 1 this much control c and i will control v and this is it save it and then you know u not the initial value of control and this this part of the code is exactly the same uh, this is the same line as before this is the same x0 calculated in exactly the same way as in the previous file u exactly the same x1 exactly the same and qx this is the new thing qx and r so these are identity matrix of size 4 cross 4 and 2 cross 2 respectively and this is our now cvx program uh, let me remind you that in order to use the cvx program you first have to install cvx on your matlab it is very easy you download the cvx zip file uh, you know unzip it in any of your computer folders and then there are two commands given on the website that you have to copy paste into your matlab uh, not copy paste one of the commands uh, include the um, path of your folder where you download this cvx package so it's very easy i mean you can do that 
variable in our in this case we have two variables the q matrix of the same size as before and the another variable is the x variable uh, this one so you can see here uh, this is the the x variable so this is sort of like the like it will be similar to uh, this x which was uh, originally like a solution of the Ricard equation but you can figure out the size of x from um, you know these uh, this matrix and because the this matrix is in parallel with this one so number of rows in x has to be the same as number of rows in this one and uh, similarly uh, number of columns of x has to be the same as number of columns in in this one so in this way you can calculate the size of uh, x matrix it is 2 cross 2 so these are the two variables in our cvx problem and we want to minimize so this is the command in cvx package minimize the trace of qx times x naught times q plus trace of this so this i have written like this uh, this the same thing i have written in the in the code uh, subject to subject to so there are two inequalities here subject to uh, sorry yeah subject to this matrix being greater than equal to zero so i have just used you know greater than equal to identity matrix uh, just to be double sure that it is you know uh, if it is positive definite does not hurt a positive definite matrix is still you know qualifies as greater than equal to zero uh, then similarly we have this uh, this matrix x0 times q minus identity of size n n in our case is four number of state variables x1 times q is this one so q transpose x1 this one and x naught times q here this is 8 cross 8 matrix and the above one is a 6 cross 6 matrix in our example so th that is why it is written like this has to be greater than i6 and this has to be greater than i8 so this is all uh, a cvx program so five six lines of uh, cvx program at the end we get our q matrix which uh, uh, we use to uh, basically calculate our control gain and then we check whether this control gain results in asymptotically stabilizing system or not so now we are ready let us run this and see what happens run it and you can see here this is our control and this is our uh, result of uh, the absolute values of all eigen uh, absolute values of the all eigen values of the closed loop system absolute value is less than one so the closed loop system is asymptotically stabilized by the control input and this is not just opti feedback stabilization this is like optimal control with respect to these weighting matrices these are the weighting matrices you can uh, you can basically once you, you have implemented the example in the paper then you can start playing around maybe change uh, this system uh, try this controller design method on to new systems uh, try different uh, uh, gain weighting matrices you can also uh, since we have like uh, this control and this control in the paper so we can uh, compare the two controls uh, like trajectories resulting from the two controls uh, in order to uh, uh, like calculate the trajectories of discrete time systems you don't have to use ODE45 you can just use a simple for loop and in this manner you can calculate the whole trajectory and you can plot it uh, I have not done it here mm, just to keep uh, the video uh, short and I hope that uh, today's video was uh, useful for you in learning uh, data driven control let me recap uh, the whole video uh, today that what we have done we have uh, discussed this paper uh, formulas for data driven control stabilization optimality and robustness we have not discussed the robustness today we have only discussed stabilization and optimal control 
and uh, uh, basically how this paper does uh, uh, things is that you know this is the main system xk plus 1 equal x axk plus buk in order to stabilize this system we have uh, first of all uh, theorem 3 for stabilization um, so this is so uh, the the main section to to focus for today was section 4 and here like two main results that we have uh, implemented theorem 3 which is telling us that the feedback control can be found by solving this linear matrix inequality and the solution of this linear, linear matrix inequality will be the matrix Q once you have matrix Q you can use this equation to find K and once you have K that that K will be the uh, then then U will be equal to KX so u which is your control input u is equal to kx will be the control law so this this will be the control law so that is uh, about uh, stabilizing feedback control the next is uh, of course the optimal control but the stabilizing feedback control we implemented on the batch reactor system for which a and b matrices are given and uh, this is the code uh, sorry uh, this is the this is the MATLAB code uh, you can pause the video here take a screenshot maybe and copy this code into your MATLAB but you have to install the the CVX package first and you know set it up uh, download the package and install it in your MATLAB uh, that is in your computer and then uh, we run the code and we saw that you know the, ma the 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 feedback gain generated using the method of the paper in indeed results in the closed loop asymptotic stability and next result we discussed was the uh, the optimization result which was like uh, this theorem 4 where is it here this theorem 4 which says that you know you can find the solution of linear matrix inequality problem uh, the optimization problem uh, by you know uh, minimizing this tr uh, sum of the two traces uh, subject to these two matrices being positive semi-definite and once you solve this problem you get the matrix Q you can use this Q to get this uh, control gain k and then of course uh, u will be equal to k times x again so u is equal to kx will be your control law and you can implement that control law and that will result in the uh, uh, optimal uh, feedback uh, stabilization so that will be your linear quadratic regulator uh, we implemented for qx and qx and r being identity matrices and this is the let's see this is the code you know we generate the random inputs and then we solve uh, the problem using CVX and then we uh, see that the gain that we found and indeed results in the closed loop uh, eigenvalues which are within the unit circle so asymptotically stabilize the system uh, that is all uh, for today uh, thank you very much and we'll continue in the next video